Choo-choo, everybody! Welcome out to another Dice Tower Daily Unboxing video. My name is Chrissy, and today we're taking a look at the Transcontinental. End of sentence. The Transcontinental. This is a uh, game designed and illustrated by Glenn Dresser by Wheelhouse Games. I'm not familiar with this company too much. I've not played anything else of theirs. Um, these are some nice illustrations, so if the game design and the illustration is done by the same person, that's, that's quite some talent there. This is a linear worker placement game. I'm interested in what that means. Send telegrams down the track to set up your future turns. Activate it when the train reaches it, or leave it there to get used when the train travels back. Interesting! Action combos! Take one action on each side of the track, plus use powerful one-time use ally cards. Okay, simultaneous bidding. This sounds different. This sounds really interesting. You see that there's a couple of awards that it won here, 2019 Canadian Game Design. Uh, competition, I'm guessing, the 2020 winner of the Cardboard Edison uh, Award, so that's that's interesting. You know, the this is a very unique idea. It says it comes with one die-cast train, so curious what, what the, let's find it. Bam! Ooh, this is even nicer than the one from Monopoly. I, I, that usually doesn't sound like a compliment, but I mean that. Like, that's a cool metal die-cast train. Uh, let's take a look at what's going on here. Historical notes. Whoa! <laughs> this has its own, you know, chapter of contents. I always appreciate this. I, I do. Um, I find this fascinating. I know that this is maybe not what everybody is here for, but it is always cool when a game can really do... So this is the Canadian uh, Transcontinental Rail uh, when, when that was made or finished or whatever. So, not something I know terribly much about in terms of history, so that's neat for people like me who are uh, ignorant of it. In 1871, with Canada only four years old, the Prime Minister calls for a massive undertaking, a transcontinental railway to link the established eastern provinces with the newly added western provinces. So what's the point of the game here? Winning the game, uh, most victory points represented by maple leaves. I like that touch. That's cool. By contributing to developments, adding new train cars via the resupply action, extending the railway during the railhead phase, completing investment cards by the end of the game, by matching symbols to your developments and ally cards. I don't really know what all that means, but nice table of contents here, a listing of what all the pieces are. Yes, any game publisher, no matter what, this is so helpful if you have an illustrated guide of what the pieces are, a nice full picture of what the setup is supposed to be, there's a lot of steps here to the set. I mean, there's not too many, but it looks like a, you know, it's, a, it's small text. It's small text. If you're having trouble seeing it all, you know, it's, it's because, like I said, this is, uh, this is a thorough looking rule book. The different resources, the action turns, the railhead phase, rail phase, railhead phase continued, actions that load resources to the terrain. Actions that unload resources to development. So it looks like you're kind of using the train as it's moving to trigger off actions to load and unload things, deliver them to other places. What ally cards do. Oh, this is always good. <laughs> you see flowchart materials here like if, then, or, and, to. Um, what are those called? Ah, they're, they're called some encoding. <laughs> this seems like a decently involved game. Uh, I'm curious about it. triggering the end of the game. The final round is triggered when the last spike tile is claimed at the end of the railhead phase. Okay. A two-player game if number 24 was not removed and set up, do so now. All right. Uh, final scoring here. See who has the most uh, maple leaves, most victory points. Examples of rounds. Always appreciated. Solo mode. It looks like this is... Uh, ooh, this is a pretty involved solo mode as it has quite a lot going on. So you have to defeat a syndicate. Um, so you set up the syndicate cards plus one ally from each region. Okay, so it has like its own built-in thing that you're playing against. And then two-player rules and variants. Okay, so each player receives two bonus telegrams rather than one. Remove number 24 from setup. Okay. Ooh, rule variant. Dastardly developments! I wonder if that's a two-player specific variant. Yeah, because these all look like two-player things. All right. 
And then a things to remember section here at the end. Not bad for a rulebook to, to do that, especially if you know, hey, this is an involved game. You might be forgetting some of these kind of steps here. So let's take a look. Like I said, the, the illustration, as well as the game design being done by Glenn Dresser. I like these illustrations. They're nice. I don't know if you'd call these watercolor-ish kind of things. But, uh, okay, so here's the solo mode board. These look like player screens. Woo! There is a lot of information on the side of your player screen here. That, uh, I mean, it looks a little bit overwhelming, but honestly, I mean, maybe it's, maybe it's a great thing. Maybe it's super useful and helpful to have all of that. Let's take a look at the punch board here. Bam! We got farms, we got lumber mills, we got all sorts of coal mines. These are, I, I like the thickness of these. They're a little bit thicker than what you would call maybe standard, uh, but they seem, oh, I, I really like the feel of those and they punch out very well. So very, very, very good. This is interesting. This is going to be some sort of construct or display or something, I guess, of them here. Uh, and there's lots of these. These are the different railheads, I'm guessing. Those look cool. Graphic design is pretty clean, very readable from, uh, from what I can tell here. So I like the look of it. It doesn't look boring. It looks very actually serene. Going along here. Bam! The shop, the yard, and the line. I don't know if this is the main board. Oh, the, this looks like the board where the train would actually move down. I really like the use. I'm, I'm hoping that you put the different colored railhead kind of things uh, or the different tokens in kind of the what looks like the season or the part of the board where that where that fits. That could be a really nice illustrative touch. Here's the west, so obviously it goes this way, and here's the east. Uh, but that, that's really pretty. I'm liking the look of this one a lot, actually. We looked at the die-cast metal train. That was the first thing we did. I like these screen-printed wooden bits here. Those look really good. I'm, okay, I'm, I'm becoming more and more impressed just kind of peeking through this here. You can see the wood, steel, workers, uh, twos, and uh, metal or ore or something like that. That looks neat. And then you got a lot of kind of basic or wooden components here, like your cubes and such. There's only the one train piece, and that's the die-cast metal one. Otherwise, you've got your typical kind of Eurogame houses and stuff here. I like the colors. That's an odd color of green. You know, it's a little bit um, Ke Kelly green? I don't know if I'm saying that right or not. And then you got discs. Whoa! What is that piece? These are not discs. I was wrong. These are like stampers or something. Boom! Okay, I'm not really sure, but th those are cool. I like those a lot. You got very similar looking ones here. Neat! All right, I'm kind of liking what's going on there. Last, let's open up the cards, then we'll be done here with this unboxing video of the Transcontinental. So we've got different region cards. Lowlands, the Prairies, the Shield. Ooh, I really like these kind of sketch looking. Um, oh, that's a cool looking symbol. Oh, is this a telegraph? Is that what those kind of represent? Oh, got it, telegraphs. Yes, those are telegraphs, obviously, Chris. Uh, I should have known what telegraphs look like. I operated them plenty in my youth. And then you got the allies here. And there's that whole guide, that whole historical notes guide. So I'm sure that if you um, want to learn more about these characters, solo mode, um, then, you, then you can. And that seems really neat. These illustrations are cool. I, I, you might or might not like the people. Like the faces look um, stylized, I guess is the word that I would use. But I kind of like the style. Um, but especially the nature serene kind of stuff. I like that a lot. This is really cool looking. Uh, this is way prettier than a lot of train games that I've played in my life. So very cool. A worker placement train game called the Transcontinental. Thank you for coming by another Dice Tower daily unboxing video. My name is Chris Yee. Have yourselves a fantastic day.